Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. He is Lord, he is Lord, sings the congregation. He is risen from the grave and he is Lord. Yet while they are singing, a man edges forward on his seat thinking, sure wish that hurry up and get this thing over so I can go home and watch the game. Like the phrases, the Trinity and the rapture of the church, the phrase, the Lordship of Christ, doesn't appear in the New Testament. Yet the concept is on every page. What does the Lordship of Christ really mean? Before I give you an answer, may I point out today that scores of people consider themselves to be Christians who have never really established a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, it's one thing to know Christ as Savior, another thing to know Him as Sovereign. Lest I lose you with words, let me point out briefly what it means to know Christ as your Lord and Savior. First, to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ means you acknowledge His position as the Son of God. After the resurrection, the disciples were met by Jesus who had triumphed over the grave. My Lord and my God, exclaimed Thomas. It was the resurrection of Christ that demonstrated Jesus was Lord. He was master over death and the grave. It gave him claim to a position never held by another. Peter tried to explain this, saying that God has made this Jesus both Lord and Messiah. I do not believe that a person can impartially examine the credentials of Christ, the evidence, without coming to the same conclusion as the centurion did who cried out, Surely this was the Son of God. Now, if Jesus was merely human, he was not Lord over all. But if he did rise from the grave, which the Bible and history confirms, he is Lord, and someday all men will acknowledge that claim. The second thing it means to acknowledge the Lordship of Christ is that a person, recognizing who Christ is, voluntarily submits to his authority and his discipline. It's an interesting fact and true. All of the disciples called Jesus Lord, except Judas, the one who betrayed him. At the Last Supper, Jesus said, One of you will betray me. Lord, is it I? Each one asked, except Judas, who asked, Master, is it I? Judas refused to submit to Christ's authority or discipline. That word, submit, bothers some people today as though it implies forcing yourself to do the bidding of someone who delights in your misery. Do you think for a moment that a father who loves his children would say, I want my children to prove their obedience by doing everything I can think of to make them miserable? Nonsense. To recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ means that you bow the knee and make him your Lord and follow him. Have no fear that he will ask you to carry around a dead fish in your tunic to prove your devotions, as Diogenes the Greek philosopher once did to one of his disciples. Don't think for a moment that to acknowledge his lordship will result in hardship, difficulty, or loss. It simply means you recognize your position in relationship to his. You fear Christ because you do not know him. To know him is to love him, and to love him is to obey him. Submission leads to obedience, and obedience is never difficult when you love him. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.